something was wrong? Uh, I, I apologize about this. Uh, if, if I could ask uh, the chair if somebody could speak just for two minutes. I don't know if you recognize all these green shirts in here. And I, I did not plan on this, but I've been notified during the meeting that this is from my district and they have one representative that would like to speak just for two minutes. And I, I'd be glad to, sure. to explain what it is, if I understand correctly. Uh, in, in the city of Miami, there are many contaminated parks and that's how I got started. Uh, about a year ago here at a meeting about Merry Christmas Park and um, I'm, I'm having a an Oprah Winfrey full circle moment because we were wearing shirts and these signs actually look quite familiar I don't know where you got them from but some of them look very familiar um, I was a activist for my local park because it was closed and contaminated and trying to get it open and I believe you all are here on behalf of Douglas Park which has been closed now for over two years uh, with uh, different contamination issues, but a similar problem. And it's it's within District Two, and it's a it, it obviously abuts District Four, and it's a it's one of our largest parks in, in the city, mm -hmm. and such an important part of our city that, that for the youth. And um, I, it wasn't on the agenda, but I know you all are here, and you've all taken the time. And this is my first day, so I, I apologize because I know we're very late. Um, but if it's okay with the chair, sure. Right ahead. Thank you, Chairman Gort. Um, thank you, Commissioner Russell. Um, thank you, uh, all of you. Uh, my name is Ralph Rosado. I reside at 3472 Southwest 22nd Terrace. Um, for four years, my family and I, my family is here along with many other neighbors from Golden Pines who, who made the trek out here tonight. Thank you all for being here. Uh, for four years, we've, we've lived there in Golden Pines. Um, and when we first moved in, I would take my family all the time regularly to the park and we really get to enjoy it. It's a 10 acre park. It is in fact one of the city's biggest parks and it's one of the parks that has the greatest number of amenities, or it did. It had open tennis courts, you could play soccer, basketball. It's got a walking path and a jogging path that works well for people with strollers, as well as the many senior citizens that live in the area. You really could do just about anything there, exercise, play equipment, all of it. Um, it was one of the best parks until it was closed 25 months ago. It was closed at the same time as several other parks, but the fact is those parks have been reopened and we don't know why ours hasn't been reopened. We are completely in the dark. Um, we have lost a major amenity and I will tell you as I went door to door and speaking to people and hearing their concerns because I was, I was like all of us, uh, whether we live there or not, I was tired of driving by and seeing the grass being really overgrown, which there's no excuse for, seeing the fence destroyed, so people are in fact going in and out of all sorts of sections. There's graffiti on the, on the main building there, it says fix our park, which is what we want, right? We want you to fix our park. Um, I'll tell you what people have been telling me as I was going door to door. Several people said, quite frankly, we think the city just doesn't care anymore. They're not even bothering to mow the lawn, so that's shameful. Um, somebody said, I need to sell my house because I have to move away for some other reason. And the fact is nobody will come see my house because they're scared of buying a house next to a contaminated park. So imagine the situation that person's in. Um, in the past year, three restaurants that were there for years and years, some, some of them for decades, um, Todo Frio, La Dolce Vita, and Roomba, which were very successful and counted on a lot of the foot traffic from the park, those have shut down in the past year because there aren't as many people going to the park. Um, the most painful thing that I heard, and I heard this several times, and I just hope it's not the case, several people said, if this were Coconut, park, Coconut Grove, this park would have been reopened already. I mean, what an awful thing for people to be thinking in the city. There's no excuse for that. Um, it is partially closed, partially open. We don't know what to make of that. This article from November 2013 from the Miami Herald says a number of things, a number of contaminants were found in the area and several of them are particularly dangerous to children. Yet children can access the park. So it's not fully closed and it's not being remediated. It's partially open, partially closed. Nobody knows what to make of that. If there are contaminants, something needs to be done because people are having access to the park every single day. It says no trespassing, but then there's a million ways to actually get in there and get exercise. We, it can't be both ways. Um, if folks are in danger, something needs to be done or needs to be, have been done yesterday. Nobody knows in the neighborhood what is going on. We haven't received a letter. We have no idea. So for 25 months, we've been wondering what is going on. Are we in danger? Hopefully we're not in danger, but obviously that puts the city in a major liability situation as well. Um, we don't know what else to say except please, Fix our park. Fix our park. Fix our park. Fix our park. Okay, that's it. Thanks. Thank you. Administration, do you uh, put us up today? 
the uh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I wish the guy from Durham that was here a little while ago would still be here. Yeah, exactly. Well, he retired for Durham. He probably was part of the approval process issue. Um, Commissioner, we started with a number of parts that had contamination. If you recall, we've been through a long process. At the beginning, there was no funding for any of this. We were trying to do various different things. Eventually, we got the approval for funding. Clearly, it is as important to us. Trust me, I, I drove by there, as a matter of fact, a couple of days ago, and I saw that graffiti. Um, it's just as frustrating for us as it is for you. Uh, we are going through the process that we have to go through. Uh, we provided um, the county Durham Department with our plan for remediation, which is very similar to the plan that had been approved in Christmas Park. The county uh, Durham Department uh, rejected that plan and uh, asked us to do additional things, which we had to redesign, take them back to Durham, and uh, we're still in that process. So, I mean, that's, that's what I can tell you. We're certainly not sitting on our um, desks, not trying to move this process forward. Um, clearly, the thing about mowing the lawns and things like that, we can do a better job of that, and uh, we'll make sure that that happens. I understand at the same time, the fence, I think, is very important, but the, I think it's important for the people to understand the process we have to go through. Our, we come up with a plan, and that plan has to go to Durham. Durham has to approve it. And one of the, I have one of my parks that's closed, which is Curtis Park, was used for the most. We were able to use certain facility because we accepted the plan, but we also got together with the county commissioner. Because the county commissioner could put a lot of influence in the, uh, in Durham. Durham a lot of times takes, it takes his time. And they might approve uh, the program today or a project and then change their mind and come back and says, no, you have to do something else. So that's the process that we all have been going through and it's been very frustrating for all of us. But I think what, what we need to do is make sure that we keep the uh, residents up to date and what are we doing. And also take them to Durham. Okay. Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. Thank you. I, uh, I believe in what you're saying and the bottom line is that it's unacceptable. And I think we need to be a little bit louder, just like these people just came forward to City Hall, and we need to uh, express that to Durham and to the county. And I'm not saying it in a bad way, but you know what? I, I think we need to now be a little bit louder in our request and say it's been 25 months. Where are we? When is it going to happen? We, we're responsible to these people. You're responsible to these people. We need to make it happen. And uh, I'm quite familiar with that park. I, I grew up. I grew up in that area. I don't know now that it's called Golden Pines, how far off you go. But I know my mom lives just a couple of blocks from from uh, yeah from from you. Uh, as actually a block. So I think my mom lives in that area. Yes. She doesn't go to the park now. I, I can assure you. But uh, it's an area I grew up in. You know, I played many sports there. And I'm not going to go on, you know, uh, mentioning all of it. But you know, it, it, it's a very nice park that for many many years it's been used. Uh, by all the families that live in that, that area. So I, I, I do believe if, if they took their time to come out here and express their frustration, realistically, we need to do a better job and express our frustration to the county and to Durham, if that is the issue. So Commissioner Russell, uh, you're inherent this, and I, I could just tell you, you have my full support. Let me know what you need from me. And if it's tomorrow starting to make phone calls, then so be it. Thanks for chair for me. Yes. No, I echo uh, the comm both commissioners' comments. Uh, it's very frustrating in, in my district. I've been fortunate enough to have a brand new facility on each park uh, since I was elected. And I would say, first and foremost, uh, the condition of the park as it currently stands, which is really on our side of the ledger, as the city manager just said, uh, is, not, is not acceptable. I mean, we should not have graffiti on our, on our walls. We should not have uh, unsecure access to a park that's contaminated. Uh, we should be mowing the lawn, and, and, and it's sort of a take pride in our own uh, neighborhood perspective. And I think you see the neighbors here, and they see that other parks uh, happen to be in more affluent areas opening faster. And I think that has been, because I've gotten a lot of the concerns and calls. Um, and, and for some reason, even though I don't represent that area, a lot of the constituents come and talk to me and, and that and voice their frustration. And uh, it's, it's a park that is not just a regional park, it's a citywide park. But I would also say, and I think uh, we, ha we had to do a Golden Pines Homeowners Association meeting 
at Colgate Park because Colgate Park was recently uh, refurbished. And it's, 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 it's bad for the community too because that park also served as a community center. All the homeowners association meetings were there. And so I can tell you that the attendance at that meeting was minimal in comparison to what normally happens. And you can see today, I'll tell you right now, just in the people in green shirts are two, three, four times larger of a group than the people that attended the meeting from the homeowners association, which means to me that it's sort of out of sight, out of mind. When you're not able to perform your basic societal functions close to home, you know, it, it, it's natural that sometimes there's a disconnection. And certainly that happened because uh, the administration was there at that meeting, both commissioners were there, the mayor was there, and this subject did come up and it was explained at that meeting. However, I can tell you that none of the people that are here were there. And so there's definitely a disconnect. Um, as for the county, uh, you know, I, I, I agree with the commissioner and I, I think we'll all sort of band together on your behalf and go to the county and, and, and really, you know, you should maintain this effort. You know, this oh, yeah. effort should not just be about advocating in front of the city, it should be about advocating in front of the county because sometimes the county doesn't appreciate uh, the sensitivity and the timing of issues as, as, as much as we do. And I can tell you that a lot of our road projects, this is why, you know, we have governments that are very far away from us. But anyhow, um, you deserve your park, you deserve a new facility on your park, and we need to do everything we can, uh, not only to expedite it on the city side, but also on the county side. Thank you. Chair? Yes, sir. Douglas Park is in District 2, and I'm your new commissioner. It's my first day today, and... <laughs> <laughs> what a first day. What an amazing first day. This is very touching to me to see all of you here because I was you just a year ago. And I was a successful local resident park activist. I got it done by working together with the city and with Durham, and they were very cooperative, and it did take time. But I want you to know that now I'm here, and it's your turn to pressure me, and you've got an advocate at me, because I'm no longer a resident. Now I have the ability to implement change from the other side, and I'm on your side, I promise you that. So. The responsibility stops with me, not with Durham. Whatever contamination issues we have that may go as far as state level, I mean, this is a very contaminated part. It's my responsibility to you. I'm, the buck stops with me, and so my door's open, and I'm here to help. We'll get it done. Thank you. Mr. Chairman, if I may real quick. Yes. I'd like to thank everyone that came out here today, but especially all the kids. If I, would, if I would have known that, uh, so yes, yes, a big round of applause for the kids. Believe, believe me, if I would have known you would have uh, come out here, uh, my little girl would have been dressed with one of those green shirts too and be out there because we too, uh, as a resident, visit all the, the parks that we will have loved to be able to, uh, once again, like in my childhood, take it to Douglas Park and play there. So I hate to ask you a question. Did you do your homework already? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all for being here, really. This is what it takes. Believe me, uh, we've been fighting for this for years now since we began this. We got to go with the county, we got to go to Durham's, and this is very important for you guys to be here. Thank you. And I'm glad the news media is here because that's important. You can tell the frustration. Thank you so much for being here. We'll, we'll be in touch, definitely. Thank you. I 14. RA-14 was withdrawn? That's right. It's RA-15. 15. 15. Daniel Rumberg, Director, Department of Real Estate and Asset Management. RA-15 is a resolution authorizing the city manager to execute a renewal management agreement with Miami-Dade College for five years with two additional five-year options. Okay. Is there a motion? Move it. Move it by Commissioner Correa's a second. Okay, it's been a second. 